Hi and welcome to this great academy lecture. My name is Lise Kilgarve and in today's lecture what we're going to have a look at is soil formation and classification part two. So really what we're going to be doing is looking at the different soil types that there are um, and the different characteristics of them. And one of the first things that we're going to have a look at is a soil profile. So the different horizons or the different layers and what they mean. So just from this diagram here, what you can see is a map of Ireland and what you can see are all the different types of soil that are present. So you can see there are a huge amount of, um, you know, variety really between the different soil types. And I suppose different soil types will lead to different types of industry. So if we think about the south of the country, like down here, you would have an awful lot of, you know, uh, easier to work with soils, they're easier to cultivate, um, and there is, you know, they're much better in terms of tillage. However, if we think of over in the West, they're not really associated with tillage farming on, on a large scale. Um, and that is just simply because the soil type is different. And again, as I said in the last lecture, the parent rock that's underneath will have a direct influence on the pH and the quality and the type of soil really that we look at. So that's just to give you an overview, but that's just really to show you that within Ireland, there are huge varieties within the different types of soil that's present. So looking at a soil profile, first of all. So this is just a general soil profile. OK, and what a soil profile is, is an in-depth look at a soil area. So what we're going to do is we are going to take a soil sample and we're going to dig down quite a substantial distance in the soil. And what we want to do is kind of take away and look at that um, soil profile to look at the different layers that are present. OK, so it's kind of like looking at a cake. So if you have a cake with different color layers in it, like one of those rainbow cakes, there's different colors, there's different layers. A soil profile is very, very similar to that. What we're doing is we're looking at the different layers. So we're not going to call them layers and we're going to call them horizons. Um, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to see that in different horizons, different things occur or different, um, you know, processes happen really. Now, all the horizons that are here are not present in every soil type, but this is just to show you a general soil profile. So the first horizon that we have is the O horizon. And the O horizon is made up of organic matter. And organic matter is something that was living and, um, you know, is going to maybe has passed on, is now dead and is going to be incorporated into the soil. OK, so you'd have like dead animals and plants generally in this area. OK, your A horizon is going to be quite, especially the A1 horizon so when we have the so the a horizon is just directly underneath the o horizon and when we divide them up into a1 a2 a3 that's just because sometimes leaching occurs and we're going to look at what these um words mean in a few minutes but in the a1 horizon you it's still you can see it's a dark color because a lot of organic material has moved down um from the o horizon into the a horizon you can also have in A2 and A3, so you can see A2 and A3 there, they're quite a light colour. And that is because there's a lot of leaching occurring. And leaching is the washing away of materials from an upper horizon into a lower horizon. Um, and I suppose it's the removal of nutrients very, very quickly. So when nutrients are removed from one horizon to the next very quickly, the soil actually and plants haven't got a chance to absorb them. And so therefore, you know, it's it's it doesn't really have any influence on them and it's not going to help with growth in your b horizon then this is generally known as your kind of accumulation zone so if there's a lot of leaching what's going to happen is your minerals from your a horizon um, are, and your o horizon are going to be leached down into the bottom um a2 and a3 horizons and what you're going to have in the b horizon is you're going to have a buildup of materials a lot of the time that is build up of iron iron is something that seems to be quite prevalent in rocks and therefore it's quite prevalent in soils um, and we can see here the b2 horizon it kind of has this reddish tinge in it and that is because there's a lot of iron so if you look at iron when it rusts it's kind of this orangey reddy color that is um 
like generally an indication of um, a lot of iron in the in the area. Your sea horizon is always your parent rock. So if it's going to be limestone, sandstone, whatever it might be, and then your ore horizon is your bedrock. Now, usually when we're drawing them out, so it is really important that you know the four main types. So we're going to go through those. We're going to look at the diagram for each of them. Um, and what's really important is that you can either from being given a diagram such as this, you can label the different horizons or you can draw out um, a soil profile yourself, okay? Um, and it is going to be important to bring in colors um, into your ag science exam because you could have to draw graphs, but you could also have to draw um, soil profiles and they do look for the different colors. And um, so you'll see that anyways, as we're moving through them. So that's just a general soil profile. Again, the different layers are called horizons. And what we need to now do is look at the different soil types and see how they're all different and what uses they have. So that's what a soil profile is, is a vertical section from the uppermost layer area to the ground level and to the bedrock, and each layer is known as the horizon. So again, we've gone through this. The O horizon is the organic material. A horizon is the topsoil. B is known as the subsoil. C is your parent material, and then R is your bedrock. So kind of talk through that already. Um, where the O horizon is very thin, A horizon would be quite, quite thick, and you'll see that anyways. So looking at some definitions, and these definitions are quite important um, because we're going to be talking about them um, through soil, but also through other areas of ag science. So what is leaching? So leaching is where soluble matter, such as minerals, are dissolved through the water. And when they are carried downwards very, very rapidly, we would say that the soil is leached. So there is obviously lots of minerals um, which plants will need to grow. But when they are brought down through the, the soil horizons very, very quickly at a rate where soil can't use them, at a rate where plants can't use them, we would say that leaching occurs. OK, uh, the leached materials will accumulate or will build up at a lower horizon. And generally that is at the B horizon. Podsolization occurs in acidic conditions. OK, and podsolization really is the formation of a podsol soil. So a podsol soil is the first type of one of the first type of soils that we're going to have a look at. And um, a podsol soil is quite a poor type of soil. But we're going to go into this in much more detail. But Podsolization is the formation of a podsol soil. Uh, Ombryotropic peat is a peat which depends on atmospheric moisture for its nutrients, and they tend to lack nutrients. So really what they do is they depend on the, the moisture to bring some nutrients, but naturally they wouldn't have um, that much nutrients there, so they wouldn't be obviously very good for growth or anything like that. Any type of peat, peat isn't great for growth. Um, mineralotropic peat is a peat which has dissolved minerals from groundwater or from surface water. So that's water found um, really at the ground level. Atmospheric water is the water really that's naturally in the atmosphere. Um, calcareous is basically another word for chalky material. So where we have lots of calcium carbonate, we would say that it's either chalky or calcareous. Alluvium are particles of sand, silt and clay that are deposited by rivers or lakes. So they're small little, I suppose sediment is really another word for it, but I suppose in relation to soil, we would say alluvium. So they're just particles of sand, silt and clay. The water table is the level below the ground in which the ground is completely saturated with water. OK, so there's lots of water there and um, plants obviously want and the roots want to reach that area. Um, but, you know, it is completely saturated with the water. Mottling is another type of or another term that we're going to come across in relation to one of the soil types. So when we have a mottled appearance, that is basically large areas of um, a certain color. So when we have mottling occur occurring, generally we have kind of large clumps of like gray material in the soil. Groundwater is water that seeps down from the soil and is found underground in soil pores but is above the, the water table. So it's water that's really, I suppose, quite freely in the in the soil. And if we think of the soil, the soil is really like a sponge. It is going to absorb a certain amount of water, but too much water is going to lead to flooding, waterlogging, and that's not very good for growth. Surface water is the water that's found on the upper surface of the soil, and that hasn't penetrated. So that's really found on the upper surface. That's generally, um, you know, if you have a lot of surface water, you've very very heavy rainfall over a large period of time because when you have a huge amount of rainfall over a large period of time the water cannot seep through the soil and um, 
you know, it, it does need time for, for it to get through. Um, and so you have this kind of film of water at the top. Um, and alluviation is the, the last one, and that is the transport of soil particles, so your sand, silt and clay, um, from the upper areas of the soil to lower areas. Okay, so the first one that we're going to have a look at is so there are just some definitions um, that that I'm probably going to be saying throughout. Um, the first type of soil that is that we're going to have a look at is pods all soil. But really what's important from this lecture is that you know the main type of soil and you know the soil profile diagram for each that you can either draw it yourself or label it. So this is your pods all soil. OK, so you can see there the different layers um, and the different areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through it here um, on the diagram in the, the notes that are attached to it. Um, I've, everything is really the same. I've just explained it in a little bit more detail. So we have our O horizon. Um, so again, a very thin O horizon where you're going to have some organic matter. And we do have our A horizon. And if we look at our A horizon, whether it's the A1 or the A2, it's quite, you know, a bleached color. And we would say that generally in a pod soil, soil um, there is lots of leaching occurring. And where you have lots of leaching, you have lots of minerals being washed from the O horizon and the A horizon down into the lower horizon, such as the B horizon. So that's your A1 and your A2. So they're very, very light in color, or we would say that they're bleached um, simply because they don't have a huge amount of nutrients there. Your B horizon, or you can call it your B2, but B horizon is perfect. So if we look at the color of it, we can see that it's this reddish orangey color. And that is because there's an accumulation or there's a lot of iron that has been leached from the upper horizons down into this lower horizon. And actually, one of the things and one of the unique qualities of a puzzle soil is that an iron pan will form. So what I put here at the top is a puzzle. So think of P for puzzle, P for poor quality soil. OK, and with the puzzle, the unique characteristic of that soil is that an iron pan forms. What is an iron pan? An iron pan is an area of really cemented um, iron. OK, and iron pans are impermeable to water. So what the problem really with an iron pan or any type of pan, but iron pan is is just something that's quite important and quite prevalent really due to the minerals that are in rock in Ireland. The problem with the iron pan is that roots of plants can't get through that. And so when they can't get through that, they can't absorb water. And so when they can't absorb water, they can't grow. OK, um, so your B horizon generally is very kind of has this like ready orangey tinge in it. But the iron pan is present um, the iron pan is present in it. And then we have our C horizon and our C horizon is our bedrock. So we found we find uh, puzzles generally overlying sandstone areas and um, it can be used for tillage, for some tillage, it's generally used for grazing and it's also used for forestry. So a lot of forestry um, is and will be replanted for um, using pods all soils simply because for some tillage crops such as barley and wheat, maize and things like that, pods all soils don't have the nutrients and they, there's a huge amount of leaching occurring there. So they're not that great in terms of large scale um, production. So that's your pods all soil. The next type of soil that we have are brown podzolic soils, and they're slightly better um, in terms of the characteristics and in terms of growth and everything like that. So again, your brown podzolic soil, um, sometimes there can be an O horizon, but generally um, there isn't. It's just kind of all in one in the A horizon. So you have quite a large amount of organic matter present here, um, and brown podzolic soils are better. So they can be used a little bit more for your tillage farming because the growth and the nutrient um, movement is going to be a little bit better. And um, there is a small little bit of leaching you can see in the A2 horizon because it's that kind of bleached color. So again, with any type of podzolic soil, there is going to be a certain amount of leaching. Um, and what you have in your B horizon is you have this accumulation of your red brown color. And that is due to the accumulation of your iron. OK, there is no iron pan in this type of soil um, simply because there's, you know, there, there's not as much leaching in the last type of uh, soil, in the pozzolic soil. There was a huge amount of leaching. So that would mean that a huge amount of iron is moving from the upper horizons to the lower horizons and forming this thick iron pan. But here there is still a certain amount of the leaching, but it's not, you know, it's, it's not going to form anything and um, that's going to inhibit the growth. OK, so brown podzolic soils are found 
overlying um, acidic areas such as limestone they are suitable for forestry but they can be used for crops and for grazing because they do have a more organic matter in them and so that's obviously going to help with the growth because the soil is going to be more fertile so that's your brown podzolic soil the next thing is your so what we're going to have a look at is just kind of a sample exam question so outline the main stages of podzolization so we looked at the definition of this already and we said the podzolization is the formation of a podzol soil so it generally occurs in area that is where there's acidic parent rock the annual rainfall is quite high and the climate is moderate and cool um, so you would have uh, pods also is forming a lot of the, in the west of Ireland because the rainfall generally there is higher than it is in other areas of the country. High levels of rainfall over a short period of time will lead to leaching. Um, and with leaching, you are going to have less materials, um, you know, being, being used really for plants um, because they're going to get washed away um, and they're going to get washed from an upper horizon to a lower horizon. Over time, leaching occurs in the accumulation of minerals, um, such as iron, deep in the soil horizon, such as, such as the B horizon, and that is where you're going to have lots of iron, which you're also going to have when the leaching occurs very, very quickly, you are going to have your iron pan forming. The buildup of iron forms an iron pan, which prevents roots, roots penetrating, um, and therefore they are unable to reach the water source, and that is going to lead to poor plant growth. So the important things I've highlighted here in relation to podzolization. So, the soil is acidic, there's lots of rainfall. When there's lots of rainfall, there's lots of leaching. That leaching is going to lead to the accumulation of materials, and so an iron pan is going to form. Okay. And this type of soil can be, it's you know, it's closely associated with water logging. Um, and the conditions can become anaerobic. When you have the conditions been anaerobic for quite a long period of time, you can um have a peat forming or you can have a bog forming. So how can pods all soils be improved? So you can deep, and this is something that they tend to ask if pods all soils um, are, are examined. Um, so they can be plowed deep. So deep plowing is something, um, and you can use a subsoiler for that. So that is a very deep plow, and what that will do is that will break up the iron pan and it will add air to the soil. Liming will also reduce the pH, and when you can reduce the pH, you're not going to have as much podzolization occurring, and that's obviously better for growth as well. And fertilizers will replace the nutrients that are lost. So if you have a podzol soil, it's really important that you're putting the correct fertilizer um, on that soil to allow for the effective growth to occur. Okay, so the next type of soil that we're going to look at is brown earth soils. And I have here brown earth soils, think of B for brown earth soils, be they're the best quality soil okay so with our brown earth soil if you look at them we have just different shades of brown there's no like harsh colors there's no harsh like reds or oranges there's no pans and um, present they all kind of just blend from one into another so it's very like it's kind of like an ombre effect really and um, so with your brown earth soils they are quite um fertile and they are quite fertile because they have an O horizon present in them a lot of the time. Um, now, the O horizon might be on its own, or as the diagram here, it's mixed in with the with the A horizon. But in brown earth soils, you do have a lot of organic matter. Why do you have a lot of organic matter? Because that's going to add to the fertility. You can see again that there's no distinct colors or there's no very, very light colors because there's no leaching in brown earth soils. So brown earth soils are very fertile because they have high organic matter levels. There's lots of humus present in them. And so that is really, really important um, for the growth. So brown earth soils, we would see them generally in um, kind of the, the midlands. Um, you might see them in areas of the south of the country, just any area where there's very, very good growth. So brown earths are found in low-lying areas overlying limestone rocks, so that's quite important. They're very suitable for crop production, um, as they, you know, you don't need to be putting a huge amount of fertilizer on them because naturally they're quite fertile themselves and they do have good drainage. And when they have good drainage as well, they also have good movement of air. And air and water are really, really important for plant growth. So where you have a lot of water, a lot of air moving, you're going to have good growth. So that's your brown earth soil. The next type of soil that we have are the glaze soils, all right? And I always think of G for glaze soils, 
G, they have this kind of gray color in them. Okay, so if we look at these, they're poorly drained soils, which form in waterlogged conditions. So again, your clay soils aren't going to be very good in terms of quality. So you are going to need to supplement that with the correct fertilizer. You have groundwater glaze forming in a valley. Um, so literally where you have lots of material kind of building up over time, that's really what uh, your groundwater glaze is going to form. So we have the A horizon here. So the A horizon, and we can see that there is some, you know, there will be some organic matter present, but not a huge amount, okay? And if we look at the color of it, like there's no distinctive brown color, it's all very, very gray. So think of gray soil, gray soil. So when you dig them up, and um, they do have this kind of bluey gray kind of tinge in them. There is some organic matter present, but it's very, very um, slim. Um, there is a B horizon, and in the B horizon, we have this mottled appearance. We said that, um, we looked at that definition already, and the mottled appearance is where you have um, clumps of a certain material due to chemical reactions. So what we have in this mottled appearance, so we can see it here, the clumps of iron, um, and why they're this kind of uh, gray color is because there is chemical reactions. So there's oxidation and reduction occurring there. Um, and that is giving it that kind of blue appearance. And then your sea horizon is your um, parent rock and generally clay soils are fo found over sandstone. OK, so they um, can be used for uh, grazing to a certain degree, but they wouldn't be very good um, in terms of crop production just simply because they're not the most fertile soils. Um, you can have leaching there again, dependent on the weather, but um, the presence of th those little moths um, or those kind of areas of iron are not really ideal for root penetration or for plant growth. So other soil types, so they're the main types of soils. So I suppose your pod soil, your brown earth, and your clay soil are the main ones really. Um, I've just put in here other soil types that are new to the course. You could be asked about them. Um, so I'm just gonna go through them very, very briefly, not in the same um, degree at all. Uh, peat soils, um, and really for these, you just need to know a sentence or two about them. Um, the soil profile diagrams are only really important for the main types of soil because you can talk about them a little bit more. Um, so the peat soils have an absence of soil horizons except for the O horizon. So they generally have a lot of the O horizon because there's a lot of organic matter present in it. Um, they're generally a dark brown or black color and they're generally used as fuel. So they wouldn't be very good for, you can graze them, but I mean, your animals aren't gonna be that productive from them. So generally um, they are used for, for fuel, for kind of turf and things like that, but you can graze animals on them, but it wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be very good quality land. Uh, the Resenda is another type of soil. So these are chalky soils that are formed from limestone rock and they have a pH of about five to eight. So kind of neutral, but dipping a little bit into the acidic area. Uh, generally, they're no deeper than 30 centimeters and then you have bedrock. So where you would find Resenda is you'd actually find it in areas um, kind of bordering um, a limestone area. So in areas of the burn, obviously we have this exposed limestone, which we talked about already, but on the outskirts of that, you would have uh, Resenda soils present because there's a lot of limestone there. There's going to be a lot of chalk and um, to kind of a chalky substance and um, but the soils aren't that deep so they would form there. Again, you know, you can use them for grazing but they wouldn't be um, the most fertile type of soil. Um, Lithosol then is the next type of soil. So here you have a shally, shallow stony soil with a depth of less than 30 centimeters. So how are these going to form? They're going to form from rock fragments um, and they form you know, over time when rock breaks down due to weathering, physical, chemical and biological weathering. And this is going to be kind of incorporated into the soil. They're mainly found on higher ground and they're suitable for rough grazing, okay? Um, and luvial soils have a high clay content. So luvial soils, they're going to have a lot of clay or like sediment in them or alluvium, um, but they have an awful lot of clay present in them. Limestone is the parent rock and generally they are used in tillage farming, okay? Um, because there's clay present in them, clay has quite a high humus content and humus is always really good to add fertility in the soil. Um, so it will kind of help with the growth and obviously you will need to use fertilizers, but naturally the soil is quite fertile.
okay so they are the different types of soils so again just to recap what's important is that you know the main types of soil you know the soil profile diagram for each of them and that you can explain the soil profile diagram so what the different um what the different horizons mean so thanks for listening and until next time happy learning